Hello, this is a video on uh, the general information about matter. <clears throat> As you can see, this is uh, in this uh, web page. Um, this is where you're going to be able to click on this particular um, video, YouTube video, to explain all uh, general information about matter. Um, <clears throat> so you should have uh, printed out or, or opened up these. The middle one is a PowerPoint presentation, which is down here, which I'll, use, uh, I'll go over it. Um, so um, the first one is the uh, mass, vo um, mass vocabulary hunt. Um, <clears throat> if you have not, you're going to go on the internet and you're going to look up uh, these words, okay? And then you're going to uh, explain scientific method answering these questions in um, providing me with um, basically what scientific method is and what the parts are and the names of the part and stuff like that, um, including um, to your URLs of um, where'd you get the information. URLs, of course, is the thing up here. Um, so, uh, so you're going to be able to do that, and we'll go over it, or we have already gone over it, depending on how I do this um, in class. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so now, uh, with the PowerPoint presentation, so again, you should have this open, and let's uh, quick go through it. Um, oh, sorry about this. Uh, there's a, in the matter, there um, is a mixture, and in the mixtures, a mixture is uh, when you have more than one type, of, one more than one ti uh, particle type together, and there are um, two types, homogeneous mixture, which is called a solution, and heterogeneous mixture, which is not a solution, not called a solution, okay? Um, <clears throat> you can also have what's called a pure substance, substance or, or simply a substance. That's where you only have one base unit, or I, again, I call a particle type. So over here in the mixtures, you have you can have more than one particle type together, but in a pure substance you can't. It's always the same substance. Okay, and I I, I kind of think of it as um, scooping, so that uh, pure substance, no matter where you scoop, take a spoon uh, spoon and scoop it in the bucket, anywhere in the bucket, or even between buckets of of a substance, it's always the same. In a mixture, I take a spoon and I scoop it, and depending on the type of mixture, it could be the same through one container, but it will, <clears throat> so if I compare the, the spoons of, in one container, they will all be the same. But be, between the containers, they, they, they wouldn't be. Okay? Or, um, <clears throat> That would be a homogeneous mixture. Heterogeneous mixture, no matter where I scoop it, either in the uh, in one bucket or between buckets, it's never the same. Okay. Oh. Okay. There are two types of uh, substances. Most times we just call it substances. Um, <clears throat> a compound and an element, which a lot of times I will call elements atoms. Okay. And that's the that's what uh. That's all, all the things we know about matter. Um, uh, graphite, which is an element, it's carbon. Uh, it's an anonymity for carbon. Pepper, it's a heterogeneous mixture because um, the particles that make it up, it can be any ratio. Um, sucro, uh, sucrose or uh, sugar to compound because the, uh, the base particle is always the same. Uh, paint, heterogeneous mixture. Some of these, you know, I'm not quite sure I agree with, but soda it's um, a solution it's a mixture of uh, materials that are consistent throughout um, pure substances there's two types elements okay um, there's a bunch of elements you know what they are there's a periodic table of elements that you can tell here's a couple examples actually we'll be using those two substances relatively soon <clears throat> here's the second type of compound uh, excuse me substance it's Called a compound. The definition of compound is two or more elements chemically combined in a fixed mass ratio. 
okay? And later on, we'll see that if it's fixed mass, it's also fixed number ratio. And we'll talk about right now, which is fixed mass ratio, okay? That is the definition, and you will need to know that definition verbatim, which is word for word, okay? <clears throat> One thing about the compounds is the, pro uh, the properties of the compound, the group thing, is have to be at least one property must be different than the the particles that make up the grouping. Okay, an example of a uh, compound is sodium chloride table salt. Uh, mixtures are variable uh, combinations of two two or more pure substances. In, in, in essence, you have two uh, at least two particle types, and they're hanging out together. And it uh, depends on how many you have. Depends on the, what substance you have. Okay, that's a rock, heterogeneous, because if you scoop it in different places, you have different amounts of the different different substances, so it's not evenly distributed. The applesauce technically is evenly distributed because no matter where you scoop it, you get the same exact uh, ratio of the two of the different particle types that make up the uh, thing. Now, um, it's not a compound. Because when you go to another container of uh, apple juice, <clears throat> you don't have to have the same ratio of those, you know, like particle ratios. You can have a different particle ratio. For compounds, they always must be the same ratio because, as you know, the definition of compound is two or more uh, elements chemically combined in a fixed mass ratio. Fixed mass. Okay? Homogeneous mixture, that's called a solution. The particles are very small and evenly distributed. I think uh, effects is supposed to mean E instead of an A. Sorry. Well, what what's that? What happens? Uh, well, the particles don't settle out, nor do they filter out, nor do they have what is called the Tyndall effect. There's supposed to be another L in Tyndall. Okay, and we'll explain the Tyndall effect in another slide. Rubbing alcohol is an example. It's a, a homogeneous mixture with isopropyl alcohol and water. Here it is. Heterogeneous mixtures. Um, <clears throat> what it is is the, the particles are aggregated together, okay, so that <clears throat> the particles may or may not settle out, and the particles have a Tyndall effect. Okay. Milk fresh squeezed lemonade that had the pulp in it, that's why it's not uh, heterogeneous. Okay. There are two types of um, heterogeneous mixtures, a colloids and suspension. Okay. And the difference is, colloids don't settle out, suspensions do settle out. Okay. There's an example of each. And then we have the Tyndall effect. The Tyndall effect and here's an example of uh, right here is a solution, and right here is not. It's a heterogeneous mixture. I think I believe it's a colloid because there's nothing settling out. Okay. And what it is is that beam of light. The particles in the solution are so small, in essence, they're not aggregated enough to have that aggregation affect the beam of light. And when it does, like in a colloid or a suspension, you can see the beam of light. That beam of light is being seen because the particles are big enough to bounce the light off of. Okay? So the left one's a colloid because it's not settling out, and the right one's a solution. All solutions never have a beam of light. You can never see the beam of light. That's why if you ever watched a uh, laser light show, the laser light show almost always has smoke because the smoke is a heterogeneous mixture and you can see the laser because it's bouncing off of the smoke particles, which are big enough. But the ear is a, heter a homogeneous mixture most of the time, so you don't see that. So a lot of times you, have a, um, you use a laser pointer, you, you can't see it until it hits something. Well, it's because in between is the air is considered a homogeneous mixture. The particles are not big enough, aggregated uh, together to be big enough to affect the uh, light beam. Okay, here's a bunch of examples. 
I'm not quite sure I agree with them all. Um, tea is a solution if you don't have um, regular, you know, have any leaves in it. Uh, muddy water, yeah, it's a heterogeneous mixture. Fog, heterogeneous mixture, I'm not sure what fog is anyway. Salt water, uh, as long as you don't have little fishies in it. If you have little fishies, it could be considered a heterogeneous mixture. Uh, salad dressing is heterogeneous. Okay, so that is the explanation between um, substances, okay, the types of substances. Okay, and um, <clears throat> and the last one is um, the difference between a mixture and a compound. We talked a little bit about it in the uh, PowerPoint presentation, but there's three things, general things that make um, a mixture and a compound different: properties, separation techniques, and composition or proportions. Okay. First one, property. Okay. Um, <clears throat> the properties. Okay. The properties of the uh, of the um, of the things that make up the compound are different than the properties. Actually, this is not correct. I'm gonna have to fix that. But the properties, so you're going to have to change this wording here. The properties, <clears throat> a compound, a compound's properties, at least one of those properties, has to be different than the properties of the materials that make up the compound. For example, table salt, sodium chloride is a solid at room temperature. It's made up of a gas, chlorine gas, and sodium metal that's a solid. So <clears throat> the compounds properties are different than the things that make it up because it's no longer a gas. Okay? Mixtures, the properties of a mixture have the same properties of the particles that make up the mixture. For example, Kool-Aid. Kool-Aid is made of water and sugar, basically. Okay? And when you make the Kool-Aid, you still have the sugar, because that's what you're drinking it for. Okay? That's the difference between a compound and a mixture. For properties. Second one, separation technique. Mixtures, always physical separation. Because remember, it's a physical thing. You're not changing the base particles. <clears throat> Compounds, it's a chemical change. We call it a chemical reaction. And then the last one is a composition or proportions. How, mon how many or the ratio of the different base units or particles are there in the material? So for a mixture, you'll have varying ratios, I mean, of particles, okay? In a heterogeneous mixture, the variable ratio is both in the container, so I'm scooping inside the container, and the ratio of the particles are different, or between two heterogeneous mixture containers, they are also different, or could be. Homogeneous mixture, on the other hand, is not like that. If you take samples inside one container, they will all have the same ratio of particles. But they're not compounds, because when you compare it from one bucket, homogeneous uh, mixture bucket called solution, to another, they don't have to stay the same. For example, Kool-Aid. Put some Kool-Aid in there, make a Kool-Aid, that's a homogeneous mixture. Scoop it anywhere in that bucket, you always get the same ratio of water and Kool-Aid mix, uh, sugar. I can dilute that Kool-Aid in, in another bucket, and I can scoop that other bucket, and there will always be the same ratio. 
But if I compare the two containers, not dilute and dilute, they won't have the same ratios. So that's what makes it a homogeneous mixture. A compound, on the other hand, it's always a fixed mass ratio. So no matter in the bucket, when I scoop it, it's going to have the same ratio. Or between buckets, if it's always the same ratio, it's a compound. Because that's the definition of compound. Okay? So those are all the um, differences. And I apologize, um, uh, again, physical properties and chemical uh, properties, Com mixtures, the, the properties of the mixture is exactly the same as the properties of the substances that make up the mixtures. Compounds, at least one of the co uh, compounds' properties is different than the parts that make up the compound. Okay? It's not this. I inadvertently put in the wrong name there. Okay? I, um, I think that's about it on matter and new general 